uh, talk a little bit more about their rebranding, explain some of the decisions behind it, ultimately answer any questions you might have, uh, but then also facilitate discussions and kind of hear back from you guys um, about if you have any ideas on what we should be implementing this year for the season. Uh, so that's kind of where we're headed. Um, Chris and I also have an activity, a brainstorming activity that we want to uh, kind of show off and like teach you guys that we think will help uh, as part of like our facilitation and brainstorming process, but also it's just a cool thing you could do with your students. We think it would be really interesting for you to see what would come out of it. So uh, Chris, why don't you start with the video um, and we can uh, kind of go in, go in from there and recording. All right, yes, we are recording and uh, I'll go ahead and uh, switch to the video. So give me a second. So, Chris, this looks a little glitchy. If we jump to the end with the last few slides, I think that might be a little better. And then we'll also post this video so our teams can access it via our YouTube. So, just go to here. Yep. Perfect. There we go. Yep. All right, so uh, for those that could see it, uh, we will be, uh, University of High School will be working with Special Olympics to host an off-season tournament uh, at the annual plane pull event at the Indianapolis uh, Airport uh, annually around the August time frame. And so uh, we wanted to make sure we're aware of it early on. Um, basically, it's an opportunity to a live off-season event. Uh, we'll have a you know, full field there. It'll be like a competition. Um, and there may even be opportunities for us to partner with the Special Olympics or um, to partner with our athletes in order for them to maybe be a human player, depending on um, how complicated we find out that is in terms of the game and things like that and related to, like safety pieces as well. Um, but kind of one of the visions we had was ideally the human player uh, position on a team would be able to allow um, different that come to the event partnered with one of their athletes. And then that athlete would work with the, the team, get a team t-shirt um, and would essentially become part of, you know, the team as one of the players at the event. And so um, we're really excited, um, you know, for this opportunity, like I said, university um, is the team that is hosting it and working with the special Olympics to kind of figure it out. We're doing our standard, you know, off-season related support to it. 
Um, but we think it's a really exciting partnership opportunity um, as well. and think it's a great way for, you know, first to continue to make it loud in our state. So we wanted to make sure that you can have the video uh, with Special Olympics and put that all together when we're ready. Great. So save the date, August 8th tentatively right now. And we'd love for your teams to attend. And we think that uh, your students would really enjoy it. Thanks for that. Okay, so with that, Chris, do you want to explain a little bit about the uh, really awesome activity that helps students kind of think about entrepreneurship skills? Uh, well, yeah, so brainstorming in general. Um, the um, brainstorming can be kind of a tough thing to do. Uh, the, we tend to put a lot of uh, catches on it. I think the key is uh, when you are going to brainstorm with your students on anything from, uh, you know, game design or, or robot design for gameplay, uh, which many of you are doing right now, uh, to um, community analysis for you know, how do we get sponsors and who should our sponsors be. Uh, brainstorming is an important piece of that. And so um, it's, it's a muscle, uh, the brain, just like anything else, and, and it kind of needs to be exercised and trained. And so one uh, one way uh, there's a there's an author by the way that I would I would highly recommend to all of you I'll put her name in the chat her name is Tina Selig uh, she's with Stanford University uh, she's written a lot of uh, really great stuff on creativity innovation uh, she um, works specifically within uh, Stanford's engineering area with creativity innovation uh, entrepreneurship so this. Um, uh, activity, the brainstorming activity to get your students warmed up or, or friends or peers uh, is to uh, pair up and uh, for a set period of time, and you can determine what that period of time would be. The first time they do this, one person is going to come up with a bunch of ideas based on the topic you choose. I, when I've done this with groups, I like to do, um, uh, you're trying to brainstorm as many ideas as you can for a dinner party. And so in the first round, and again, you can make it 30 seconds a minute, one person's gonna come up, come up with as many ideas as they can for a dinner party, that their partner is gonna say no and give them a reason why. So if I might say, well, let's have it on Friday night, the first person's gonna say, no, I'm, I'm busy, I'm, I'm uh, washing my hair on Friday night, because that's just what I usually do on Friday. Night. So, um, so that's, the, that's the activity. And then the second round will be, You'll switch, and the uh, person who was saying no the whole time, they have to come up with ideas. And then for a set period of time, their partner will then say yes and. So they'll add on to it. So they'll say, Friday night, yes, and let's make the party last for three days. So that's the activity. OK, so let's do an example. So let's not, can we do something besides a dinner party? We could do uh, whatever you uh, would like, Renee. We could do uh, brainstorming. Okay, so let's do, so day at the State House on March 10th okay. with First Indiana Robotics. So, uh, so come up with ideas and I'll say no to all of them and then we'll switch. Okay, for about five or 10 seconds because this will make me sad. Um, okay. Yep, just real short, real right. short. Okay, Sam's laughing at us. We should invite the governor. Uh, no, because the governor is a busy person. We should have every team from Indiana there. No, because we don't have enough space in the building. We should make posters and march around. Uh, no, because then we'll look like we're boy boycotting them. All right. I think you get the sad. idea. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Okay. So now do it. we switch, right? So how does it work? So then do I do I say the ideas the and idea. you say yes? And I'm saying yes and. Okay. Okay. All right. So then, um, so March 10th, stay at the State House. Um, what if we fed all the teams lunch? Yes. And we should have them eat lunch from restaurants that are all from Indiana. Uh, what if we brought a stamp and repeat banner and did interviews with all of the students? 
Yes, and we should make sure the mentors and coaches and teachers are in here. Uh, what if we invited the governor? Yes, and we should invite the first lady and we should invite the vice president and uh, the president if they're not too busy. <laughs> uh, should we, in, uh, what about inviting the representatives from their district? No. Oh, wait, I'm supposed to say yes, and. Yeah. Well, there we Okay, go. but you get the idea. And so yeah. the reason, so you, you guys get the idea. We just wanted to share, um, Chris had shared that with me as like a brainstorming technique. And I saw that your, as, as mentors of teams, um, your students could really take that and run with it. And that would be kind of exciting. I think the thing, um, I think the so thing with that, with, I think the um, thing to focus on with that activity, Renee, though, is to make sure the kids know that they, with their yes and, is to the you're going to get really crazy ideas if you let them go for about a minute or so, they'll start getting really big, and that's okay. The other thing you want to spin that off into is is a discussion of bad ideas. Um, it that's a really fun one to do too. Is come up with 50 really bad ideas for this event because chances are there's gonna be about five or six really, really fantastic ideas with the most bad ones. So anyway, there you go. I'm unmuted, cool. Um, so fantastic. So one of the reasons we wanted to have this is to explain a little bit more about the new rebrand. Um, associated with the, you know, or that we kicked off with the new year, new decade, new season, um, which we're super excited about. And so um, I, in a moment here, I'm going to share my screen. No, Chris is going to share his screen. Thank you so much, Chris. Um, and we just wanted to talk a little bit about what we had here. And so first, Chris, can we go to the homepage of the website to start off? Um, I think that that would be a good place to kind of like migrate. So, uh, you know, first Indiana Robotics, you know, essentially came about because we have become the program delivery partner for the first Lego League Junior, uh, the first Lego League Junior, the first Tech Challenge, uh, and the first robotics competition programs for our state. And so that is really exciting. Um, but it also means that we need to uh, break down some silos and we need to be, you know, essentially not just Indiana first, which is very first box competition centric, but make sure we are thinking a little bit more broadly in terms of um, engaging more programs and more community members into our first Indiana family. And so basically where we wanted to start um, with this rebrand, which will take place over the course of a year, so it's not going to be quick, um, but basically we wanted to start by essentially, you know, updating our website and our quote unquote doorstep. And so you, you can see, here um, we have done a little bit of updating we have our logo updated um, we now have a donate area on the website we have a blog area again on the website um, but you kind of have this large hero image um, header that is scrolling with photos of our indiana children i know that was a big uh, request from our previous website is making sure we have our indiana teams on our site um, and then the logos for each program are very large and so this is kind of our first little area area um, that we've updated on the website. We'll start updating the program pages over the summer, um, but we basically just wanted to make sure that we were, um, you know, getting this started and kind of starting with a new fresh doorstep to get things kicked off for this new season, new decade. And so Chris, if you scroll back up and go to the blog, one of the things that I did um, is, you know, we sent out a mentor email and a team email to uh, the mentor, you know, email update list. And where we started was essentially a thank you uh, to the uh, Indiana First community. And so Chris, if you scroll down to the very first blog post that we have, um, it, it's basically an opportunity um, for us to say, you know, we are very proud of everything we did as um, and we are excited for where we are today. And we also, in the email we sent to mentors, invited everybody to um, contribute to the history of the organization from an FRC point of view um, so that we could make sure that we are documenting and remembering all of the important achievements that we made. And so 
as we go, we just celebrate our fifth year of districts. We're moving into our sixth year of districts this season. Uh, and we wanted to essentially reintroduce you to our organization, which is now First Indiana Robotics, a cross program uh, entity that really cares about, you know, changing our future and helping our youth. Um, and so we'd love to, again, hear um, about your ideas in terms of what and how you want to shape the first Indiana robotics community. And so over the course of this next year and at our events, we will have listening opportunities for us to sit down and hear from our, you know, our community cross program um, to hear what you guys need and how you would like to build the community and how you want us to become, um, you know, a family that you don't mind seeing more than just over the holidays. So, um, so that's where kind of these blogs came in is we wanted to reintroduce and re-explain some of these different pieces. And so we will have two history blog posts, one about FRC and one about um, FTC for us to post and include um, as like prequels, less like the Star Wars prequels, more like historical knowledge. Um, and so we will be including those on our website to make sure that we are capturing where we came from because that's important. Um, but also, we, this is the time for us to embrace, embrace the change culture and take the next steps into how can we give children in Indiana access to robotics programs. And we have to change a little bit to make that happen. So after our thank you, uh, the second blog that we created, Chris, if you can go to the next page, um, is the Introducing First Indiana Robotics. Chris, you're jumping ahead here. There we go. Um, and so when we introduced our organization, I just wanted to start with some of the basics, right? Um, and so uh, I am a big fan of Simon Sinek, in case you haven't read blogs, figured that out by now, what you do it's why you do it. Um, and so I, I have the pleasure as the president to reintroduce you to the organization our mission and guiding principles and so I explained you know why we were branding and going through all of this and then I explained what our name was and so it took some time to determine you know what our name should be what our acronyms are um, but ultimately after going through uh, you know the Secretary of State website and the DBA and working with some of our lawyers it was determined that we should become first Indiana Robotics instead of first in Indiana, um, because that was too close to some other names. Um, and then our abbreviation, because first Indiana Robotics is a really long name, is going to be FIN. So, you know, essentially shortened to, you know, first Indiana, first Indiana Robotics. Um, you know, uh, F I N R is too close to what first in uh, uh, New England looks like. And so um, I wanted to make sure that it was very clear that we were Finn. And also, you know, the term Finn allows us to, at the end of all of our events, we can put up a nice PowerPoint slide that says Finn, and then it's the end of the event. And so I thought that was rather clever, and I like it. And also, um, with some of our other initiatives, the term Finn will kind of come into play with some of those other pieces as well. So um, if we scroll back down past the name and logo, and you go into, you know, how to stay in touch, uh, basically, First Indiana Robotics is too long to use on its own and for social media. And so conveniently, um, some of our friends at Triangle Fraternity pointed out to us that our social media handles could be First in Robotics. And I'm going to let you pause for a second and laugh because that's amazing um, and, and quite comedic. And so we will be using the hashtags First IN Robotics. Um, for our social media, um, unless it's on like Facebook or LinkedIn where we're able to use the full name, but our hashtags, our Twitter, our Instagram, you know, that is where we're going, you know, first in robotics and we're kind of hitting that brand pretty hard. Um, and so we were really excited to do that. Now, with rebranding, first of all, I think everyone knows that I am very fiscally conservative because if I can give, you know, money to a robotics team to help them start up a program, you know, I would do that before like spending money on fancy AV equipment. I'm sorry, Neil, this is just true. Um, and so with that in mind, um, you know, it, it has gotten to a point where a lot of our equipment and materials, you know, Chris and I have run out of business cards, our signs need to be updated because they're just old and they don't look great. Um, and so because we are getting to this point where it's time to rebrand, um, we need to kind of be prepared 
with this new logo to replace those items. And so um, we would love for you to help us rebrand over the course of this next year. And so if you see an old logo, please take a photo of it um, and then tag first in robotics on social media with the hashtag INF throwback. Uh, and then share an inspiring story from your time in Indiana first, because I, as a, I'm a busy lady, Chris is busy. Um, we do not have time to go through every single one of our materials and like make sure our logos are updated. And so as you see it, we're inviting you as part of our first Indiana family and community to help us with that. And so at the end of the season, we can go back through the hashtag and go, oh, look at, you know, Sam found a logo, you know, on one of our signs that we really need to make sure to update. So thanks, Sam, for letting me pick on you. Um, so that's one of the pieces that we'll be working on as well. So then uh, uh, if we go to the next blog post, you know, Chris, this is a really exciting one that I know you wanted to keep, you know, going to. So now we're ready. So this area and this third blog post is probably one of the most important ones because it talks about first Indiana Robotics, our mission, our vision and our purpose. Um, and so Chris, I'm going to have you skip over this purpose um, you know, banner to start off and I wanna kind of go through each item step by step. And so we all know the first organization you know, was founded by Dean Kamen back in the oldie days, um, but you know, the mission of FIRST Indiana Robotics and the mission of FIRST Headquarters should really be the same. Um, and so you know, our mission is to inspire young people in Indiana to be science and technology leaders and innovators by engaging them in exciting mentor-based programs that build science, engineering, and technology skills that inspire innovation and that foster well-rounded life capabilities, including self-confidence, communication, and leadership. It's a great mission statement. There's no need for us to change it besides highlighting the fact that we are inspiring young people in Indiana. Um, in terms of the vision, like we all reference Dean's vision, which is to transform our culture by creating a world where science and technology are accepted and young people dream of becoming science and technology leaders. Um, so all of that is consistent and, and makes sense for us to incorporate as part of FIRST Indiana Robotics. Now the fun part comes in where we get to our purpose. So as I said earlier, I'm a big fan of Simon Sinek. Um, I'm actually really devastated because he is presenting in Chicago the Friday before the St. Joseph event and I found out about it too late for me to buy tickets for our staff to go. So sad, um, but I love Simon Sinek. And so he, he has this concept called the golden circle. Um, and so I highly recommend you and your students over lunch sometime over the build season should watch his TED talk on how great leaders inspire action because he introduces this idea of the golden circle and how inspired organizations and inspired people start with why instead of what. And there is science and data behind it. And they just turned on a vacuum cleaner. So if you hear a vacuum cleaner, that's what that is. Um, so if we keep scrolling. Uh, that's why we started with why um, from this concept with First Indiana Robotics. So go down, Chris. So our why is that First Indiana Robotics believes our future is built better together and improving the world starts with our youth. And And so we stole this headquarters, you just the letter together. I also believe that our youth are the uh, people who hold the keys to improving our world. And so these two car concepts were put together, and that's really how um, we, we have these different aspects of our why. And so we, we kind of highlighted it in the, you know, FRC blue, um, just to kind of emphasize the fact that this is why we do what we do, and this is why our organization exists, because you know, improving the world starts with our youth, and we believe we can build a better future together. Um, and so we're going to do that. And so then it comes to how, right? Um, so this is where we talk about how we actually do that, because the students need these skills that the FIRST program is giving to them. Um, so in order for them to change the world, we need to be teachers. Um, and so in terms of the how, you know, when you talk about robotics programs, all robotics competitions and all robotics programming has problem solving. Uh, they have hands-on learning. Uh, they have intense competition. The thing that makes us unique as an organization is the mentorship aspect of our organization. It's the problem, it's the, the community engagement connected to problem solving that is unique. And it's our core values that are leveraged in times of competition. And so when you look at our how, 
you can see the, these key differentiators were included as part of our you know, whole uh, purpose statement, right? So the idea that uh, the way we build our future is through mentorship, partnered with hands-on learning, problem solving, connected to community engagement, and core values applied in times of intense competition. And when we use it in like a shortened, you know, on the back of a t-shirt style logo, you can see we do, you know, mentorship plus hands-on learning, problem solving plus community engagement, and core values plus intense competition, and et cetera. Um, and so I have really, we're building a better try a list of all of these items that you are absolutely able to read. Um, a few of the key things are the access to career professionals, the ability to challenge students and have them give back to their communities, putting fun into the program, but then also expressing the core values of first, gracious professionalism, cooperation, and the five uh, to six, I can't, first core values that includes fun which is an incredibly important part of the program. Uh, First Indiana Robotics is a robotics community that prepares young people for life. And again, uh, you know, First Marketing is really knocking this out of the park. We took that bit, you know, about a robotics community that prepares young people for life from them, but we really kind of turned it into our own, and we're really taking ownership of that concept. And so um, when you scroll down, Chris, and you look at the what aspect of the program, um, you know, we're preparing young people for life, and what we do is shown in the first Legally Junior, first Tech Challenge, and first Robotics Competition programs. And so we will be doing regular blog posts on a weekly basis um, that allows us to expand a little bit more into these. And what I'd love is, you know, I just need 52 blog posts in a year, um, and I say just in kind of a humorous tone. Um, so what I'd love is community, if you, if, if you have students who would love to be, you know, published on our blog, who can tell their story, who can share something inspiring, is there a concept, a technical concept that you think is really cool? Like, Sam, I can think of, like, the Monte Carlo simulation your team does. It would be an amazing blog post to throw down. Um, you know, like, Logan, you could talk about some of the, uh, cool things your committee is working on. Uh, 447 could, you could just literally highlight your mentor that would work for food, and, because that would It really that that would be you know something we'd want to highlight because it would be part of uh, you know we're definitely open for people to submit blog posts and we would love to help children build up their portfolios by publishing something of theirs that they can then put on their LinkedIn profile and use on their resume in the future as well. Um, and so really, it's just secretly, it's actually an additional way for me to uh, mentor more children because I enjoy doing that. Um, so yeah, so I think that's kind of the big breakdown that we have. Um, Chris, if you can scroll back up to the top, um, we can show them the whole banner all together. Um, and the back of the t-shirt version is a little bit more simplified, um, but it gets the same message across. And so, uh, but this is really where, you know, we'll have some posters and some signs and pull up banners, you know, with these materials as we go into the season. Maybe, you know, we're not busy or anything, right? Um, we'll see how that goes. But this is really where, you know, we are pointing our organization. And so with that, I am going to be quiet and mute myself because I would like to hear ideas from other people about what you would like. And I guess one example is um, one cool thing that that isn't, you know, necessary, but I think would be fun is I am totally willing to like take like $75 and have every single team give me a evergreen uh, theme song. So like Share Robotics might pay Robotics would buy that song. And then between the media team, the AD crew, and our talent team, aka game announcers and MCs, uh, they would make sure that out of one of your 12 matches that happens at an event, your song plays during like in the lead up to that match and so then you can just watch the stands like rock out because the kids have their theme song playing and one of the other things that we'll collect is a little snippet of like what are the 10 to 15 seconds you would want us to play if we could roll it out during like alliance finals right so you're announcing the teams and it's like oh here comes Greg, and you play a jam or like whatever your song is pg-13 no pg not pg-13 pg um you know, that's the song, you can play this little snippet. 
Now the snippets, I don't know if we'll get to this year, but we can work towards it, towards the future. And so that type of stuff, like, just helps make us fun and makes us a unique organization and makes sure that the children that are in this program even go away, um, that we are still like the coolest people out there. And so they will come back because they feel like they're part of our organization, they are valued and they're a part of our community. So there, that was one example of like where we can start thinking. And Chris and I will basically respond to any of your ideas with yes and, and we'll just kind of think big. So that's why I wanted to have this call and really invite Well, so I'll start out with grand ideas to bring to the table at a particular moment. I appreciate that it's done a, you know, a super job in what's clearly a difficult rebranding operation. Um, I'm excited about it. You've done a you know, really nice job of together, and I can't wait to share that with the team. Awesome. Um, as a question, I guess so then if you don't have any ideas now, it's totally fine, but I would like you to ponder and kind of mull over it and bring it to the team and see what ideas they might have. Um, we will be making announcements about some of our initiatives. So I'll give you a sneak peek. Um, some of our initiatives will include uh, first in family. So it's kind of like hashtag first in family, F-I-R-S-T-I-N family. Um, and that involves uh, essentially in a SWOT analysis uh, that involves the fact that that our key volunteers are between 6 and 35, or at least a lot of them are. Um, and so we're trying to become a more family-friendly organization so that you can, uh, you know, bring significant others and kids and grandparents, and there is, like, a place for nap time and, like, small children vision something like, and he they're you know they get an hour-long break but then 30 minutes of that break they are doing a story time with like kids in grades you know fourth through um or not fourth grade but like you know kinder four years old to seven years old and so we're reading books and like it's kind of like story time with like robots and so it's this cool opportunity to engage with kids or maybe they're doing like hands-on stem activities so that's the like family initiative um, then the other initiative is women are first in robotics. Um, and so that's, that's kind of updating our, um, girl branding, which isn't really first official. So we are essentially getting it a full that our brand stealing it from Texas because why reinvent the wheel, um, is women are, you know, first in robotics, uh, really focusing on providing a community and making sure young women in our program see the city of first, you know, in the world and in the program, but also empowering the women who are our mentors and volunteers and making sure that, you know, if they want to have kids, like there is still opportunities for them to engage, or if they are busy in their career, there are still opportunities for them to engage in maybe different ways. Um, and then I think our third one is from first to your future. And so that one focuses on connecting first to college pathways and career pathways and doing a better job at building those connections. Um, and then we have a couple other like general ideas that relate to our strategic plan, but those don't quite have like catchy titles to them. Um, so those three are the catchy title ones that I feel like are, you know, almost ready to be rolled out, but will be ready to be rolled out and talked about during our events this year. Well, I really like that, that focus on the women are first in robotics. I like that. And is it, so there's there are women are first in Texas. Is that a thing? Yeah. Yeah. Very, very nice. Uh, um, yep. And so I just stole it, but it, it, you know, because the Indiana abbreviates to I N uh, it gets real, real cute, real fast. What we can do with some of our, our project yeah, here. Oh, no, that's, that's, that's excellent. I know that, I mean, that's, Retention of uh, ladies continues to be a theme that, that we struggle with, frankly. And so 
um, initiatives like that, I think, can can help. I I grew by by five or six, and then lost all of them promptly. Oh, that's that's very empowering, yeah, but interesting. Yep. Um, um, I don't have a, a fast solution. Um, you know, I have, I think if you start watching some of our, so I know not by data yet, I should know by Sunday by data, um, that because of the work that some people in our organizations on the back end, um, we have a lot more women in key volunteer roles in the state, but I don't know by what percentage that's increased. And I think that we could do even better. Um, I also know that, you know, there are a couple other things that we can do to, you know, build a community and to make girls feel welcome. And that's one of my big areas is how can we increase the percentage of female mentors and female students? And I don't have an answer yet, but I'm hoping that through this initiative, we can start coming up with um, what are the barriers to entry and barriers of retention and start finding solutions um, that ensures that you know, male advocates know how to support women and that, you know, women know how to vocalize their needs. And like, there's kind of this nice, um, beautiful partnership that is inclusive, um, but also supportive. Oh, that's interesting. I mean, I don't want to derail this in that direction, but it's, it's, I think it's an important aspect. It certainly is for us. Cause I would say, and I wish I had, we don't collect data like this, but my, my gut feeling is that women, young ladies who come to our multiple meetings and then don't come back, probably triple what it is for the males for us, I would say. Three to one. Yeah. Um, I also wonder, you know, and I know Cyber Blue dropped off the call here, but there is an interesting part that I have where I haven't been able to do this yet. So Chris, honestly, this might be a cool project for you and Madison to work on. I'd like to get a list of every team that's attended RAGE over the years. So like a list of all the schools. Um, and then see if there has been, based on first database in the, um, you know, based on consent and release forms, if there has been an increase in female percentages for the teams who have attended RAGE on an annual basis over a certain number of years. Because that would be really interesting data for us to poke around at um, to kind of see if it's helping. So, um, and Tony, you know, I totally agree as a uh, young individual who had executive leadership skills and a strong personality myself, uh, I rarely had or noticed, um, you know, any issues around, um, you know, vocalizing my viewpoints. But I know for a fact that uh, girls who were around me um, did not always feel the same way. And so, like, I, I completely see that as a, you know, there needs to be like a confidence building opportunity um, to make sure that uh, you are building up young women to feel comfortable. So, hey, we can see your video. Hi, Tony. You're still muted, just as an FYI. There we go. I mean, I run an engineering organization, so I've got, you know, I've got several women that work for me, but it takes a strong personality. It's, there's a, usually in engineering, especially in this competitive world of robotics, that uh, the, the boys tend to, to push people, you know, really compete for those positions. And it takes a strong woman to, I, I haven't seen that as much in the girls as I do the older, I think, the women who survive engineering schools tend to have already mastered that, that skill, so to speak, and it's it's hard, harder. I I haven't yet figured out how to develop that in young girls. Sure, well, and what, what, I mean, here, honestly, here, Renee, I'd like to respond to that. The problem is mm -hmm. that that just demonstrates a lack of of our ability to influence our young men to understand that their organization will be stronger, powerful, and more creative and better balanced if um, they were part of that welcoming community. And so that, it says something about how we operate in the shop. And I, and I take it as a personal failure right now because I don't know how else to do it that they show up and then they don't want to come back. And there's a reason for that. And it doesn't, it's not just them. It's, it's in order to expand their, 
their presence, we're going to have to change the environment. I, that's at least what I currently believe. So um, I think that I would like to see if Erin Riley is available to chat about this topic at some point, um, because she is a strong um, female leader on Chair Robotics and was a strong female leader on Southport. Um, She's, you know, an engineer. She is highly organized, essentially a lead mentor. She is a lead, lead mentor of both of those teams, um, or was a lead mentor of both of those teams. And then um, I think that she has a really interesting viewpoint on how to build a balanced team and how to watch, and how as a mentor, you can watch for opportunities to engage young women or, and it's not necessarily even just young women, it's um, how do you engage students who aren't as confident in the shop or confident with their abilities. There are certain things that you can do and you can watch for um, to encourage them and like bring them in. Um, but it's taken me, her, you know, our other mentors years to kind of figure out some of those tricks and those key things. Um, so, and I also think one of the other pieces is, you know, are you able to start younger? You know, are you able to start recruiting in first Lego league or first Lego league junior even and catching the girls before, you know, all those articles that say when you hit, you know, fourth grade, like if you haven't, if you don't like STEM, like that's, that's when like things start changing and if you can't catch them then, you know, you have a hard time later on. So. Yeah. Yeah. But if, if you, if we can't organize such a call with Aaron, um, yeah. that's something that I would, that's a zoom I would definitely sign up for and I would bring all my mentors to it. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm sure we can figure that out. I think, uh, Chris, if you want to maybe connect with her, Tuesdays and Thursdays probably generally work really well with her schedule as an FYI. Okay. Okay. So in terms of branding, do you guys have any other ideas about cool things that would make us, you know, that would make us exciting a little bit more of a have a family vibe like are there ways that we can celebrate things that we aren't currently celebrating um we have that award function can do we can make it more exciting to be doing that again i think i have a volunteer recruited to help us with it so yeah All right, well, while you think, Logan, if you would like to unmute yourself and maybe mention your new committee and the fact that these initiatives essentially live underneath your umbrella and how people can contact you uh, and reach yep. out. Can you hear me? Cool. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes Logan, it's you're a little loud pingy. and clear. Yes, we can. A little pingy, okay. Um, <clears throat> hi, my name is Logan Byers for I think everyone knows me in the chat. Um, uh, previously, my committee was the mentor training and then training and development committee. And then with our rebrand and restructuring on the board, uh, I have become the program support committee chair for uh, First Indiana Robotics. Uh, so moving forward, we're going to be working not only on that training portions that my committees were already working on, uh, but we're also going to be bringing in um, how do we make uh, the first Indiana uh, program a more of a um, uh, structure from uh, regions so we get uh, support each other. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, um, and then also work on uh, some of the other initiatives that we have to see. Um, so yeah. Um, you can contact me L Byer at indianafirst.org. Um, so yeah. Is there anything else that you want me to cover there, Renee? You're still hey muted, guys. Renee. Oh, well, there I had are. a really great response that was uh, fairly long, which is pretty hilarious. But um, what I was going to say was, Logan, that sounds great so much. Um, 
part of our board members and their committees um, and also our student board of direct directors and so that will essentially give us the opportunity um, to one make sure that you as mentors and as uh, groups and individuals in the community know how to reach out and like give us recommendations and suggestions and like get these cool ideas out into the world but then also it allows the committees to say hey if you're really passionate about increasing the number of young women in the first program really passionate about learning how to do that um you know you can be part of logan's committee we're trying to keep the time commitment to a reasonable level um but if you're passionate about it you know that should make it fun for you to work on it um and that's where we really want to start directing people is like how can we take the passion that we know you have and, and we know you do so much with your team and we don't want to ask you to do more that you would find um not invigorating but if you want to give more back uh there are opportunities for you to do that and we can share what those are and so um we'll be working on introducing our board members introducing our student board of directors members that you know where they are you know sam you're very familiar obviously with one of those students at this point um because you know ivan is one on our student board directors and he's on your team um, but he, he, I think, has one of our first introductions that we'll be posting, which is pretty exciting. Um, and so, so I'm excited for the community to see those, to see our initiative introduction, um, and then ultimately just come out swinging in terms of a, you know, organization that everyone wants to be a part of. I, I like that idea of trying to do, um, of doing student highlights, and I think that's cool. Um, would be also interesting to maybe do, uh, we're, we're getting long enough that, you know, we've been around long enough, we're starting to have some alumni getting out there. So yeah. some, sometime we ought to be uh, trying to, to do some alumni highlights, you know, the, where are they now kind of things. Yes, 100%. And uh, if you have alumni that would like to be published in a blog and we can write up a story about, we would love to be connected with them. Um, our AmeriCorps Vista Madison, like the, the, the images that you saw, she created all of those. Um, she has mad skills and she is just so super talented. And the reason we were able to really pull off this rebrand um, and update our social media and update a lot of our images is because of her capacity and support. And so uh, you bet that we will be uh, submitting that to first headquarters and letting them know that because of this Vista, we had the capacity to do this rebrand and that was amazing. And it will help us um, engage more children in robotics, essentially. Okay, so I think with that, um, you know, we are available. You can always email info at indianafirst.org if you want to chat about something and you're not sure who to talk to. That actually goes to a couple people, and then Chris can essentially redirect you to the right person from there. Um, but I'm looking forward to seeing everybody um, and all of the cool designs and what your teams are up to throughout the season. Um, please pass along the message to your teams that we want to hear from them and they should be tweeting and updating us on what they're up to. And, um, you know, oh yeah, and this Thursday, we are, uh, the First Indiana Robotics is being honored at the State House with a resolution being presented by the State Representative Sue Arrington. Uh, from the Muncie area and so uh, we will have the uh, Muncie FRC team, we will have the FTC team from the Red Alert area, we will have the FLL Junior team from Perry Meridian and we'll have an FLL team um, from the Franklin area who will be coming along with our student board of directors members to be um, noted and represented um, you know with this great honor in terms of this resolution and so this is a brilliant way to tie into our March 10th um, uh, event at this day at the state house um, and so we are really excited about that and we would really love it um, Sam I've already told Amy and your student from I don't remember where but he presented today that they needed to come to the state house on March 10th because of how articulate they have been with their sponsor presentations um, and so you know Tony if you have any students that you think would be great to invite to come who are well spoken and have great stories and you know please keep that event date in mind we would love to have them so it's tuesday march 10th first robotics day at the state house chris has a sign up form he's been including in the team emails um but but this is this is the start of us really encouraging you know our, our region and our local legislators to pay attention to robotics and to really 
you know, help us get funding so that we can bring robotics to more kids. Okay, awesome. All right, so thanks everybody for your time. I really appreciate it. Uh, Chris, if you can close the recording and get this posted on our YouTube channel, that would be fantastic. Uh, we'll go from there. So thank you so much, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Renee. Thanks for being here. We'll talk. Thank you, Chris.